Thanks so much, Phil. Hello, everyone. My name is Jesper Ambrosius, and I work for uh, the LEGO Group and head up what we call LEGO Workplace Experience. And today, I will talk to you about leading in a hybrid workplace. So, you know, working remotely or working from home is not a new thing. Many of us have done it for years, but it's quite clear that COVID-19 accelerated uh, an already evolving process. And the question, of, of course, is when people are dispersed more uh, and when people uh, work more from home, and maybe every meeting will be an online meeting, as Chris Top uh, wrote uh, in, a, in a LinkedIn article more than a month ago, how does that affect leadership? Um, so that's really what I'll, what I'll dive, into, um, dive into today. And just what, what Chris was really writing about in the article was if we randomly come into the office, then just gathering five or six people will be very, very difficult. And also, in that sense, the minority rule counts here because if just one person is online, everybody should preferably be online. So I believe that leaders should at least focus on four things in a, in a hybrid workplace. And I write here at least because there's definitely more, but these are just what I found interesting in the, uh, in the, in the field that I'm in of, of workplace experiences. So the number one is focus on output, uh, not input. The second one is plan ahead. The third one is master the digital room. And the fourth one is what I call communicate triad of interest. Right, so let's go to the first one here. I believe that with people working more remotely, not being physically together, there, there's a risk of a declining trust. And what I mean by this is that it's still out there uh, definitely experienced it myself. I have colleagues in other companies experienced it as, as well. That if you unobserved, people will tend to slack, right? So if we cannot see what you're doing, you're, you're you know, maybe slacking. And uh, when you simply do not have that uh, metric or proxy of input of hours spent between, you know, behind the screen uh, equals output, then something else has to happen. So what I believe uh, we must do as leaders, and it's actually something we've always should have, you know, we should have been doing for, for a while, at least in the, uh, in the knowledge sector, is to be better at defining end goal uh, and then invite for continuous feedback. So instead of, um, so instead of observing that you know, one person is, is sitting 10 hours behind the screen, another is sitting nine hours, but then the person sitting 10 hours is more productive, we should instead be better as leaders to define the task, the end goal, and then in, invite for continuous uh, feedback. That actually also will then, uh, you could say, uh, benefit uh, or reward those who are extra fast or extra talented, because they will actually then get time back for their work-life balance uh, when they, if they do it, uh, um, do their task quickly. The other uh, area here is what I call plan ahead, and there's really two areas, and I'll go through a few examples from LEGO actually that we have created in my team to, to, to highlight what I'm saying here. Um, the one thing is plan according to, to activity, and the other thing is really plan with your team. So let me just um, showcase what I mean here. Hmm? Oh, yeah, right. So. Our hypothesis is actually that working from home or working remotely is not in direct competition with working from the office. Actually, we believe it, it complements each other. And this is highlighted here where on, you, on the y-axis you have uh, collaborative and individual. Uh, and on the x-axis you have um, the office or uh, the, uh, you know, working from home. And here you can see that uh, what we've mapped out here is actually not just uh, uh, the it's, it's an assumption, it's also something that we've actually um, tested out at LEGO and asked people about. So this is actually based on, on survey as well. And here you can see that um, working uh, with more focused work, uh, doing e-learning, uh, town halls, quick coordination meetings, might actually be better suited for working um, from home or remotely, Whereas um, workshops, uh, strategy uh, meetings, walk and talk, talks, informal meetings, it's much better suited still uh, in the physical workplace where you are together. And here, let's, uh, let's look at, uh, at Albert. 
uh, and and how we could look like for someone who who works in a in a in a hybrid workplace. So here you can see on uh, on Monday, um, Albert comes in. He does some focus work in the office. Then later he does some collaboration work. It's it, you know it's a bit the same on Tuesday also coming to the office. On Wednesday he then works from home. It's more uh, focused work um, for Albert and going he goes then back to the uh, office on Thursday again a lot of it is with colleagues it's mostly with colleagues when he's in and then on Friday again uh, he works from home and and uh, does more of the coordination and the focused work uh, that um, that is better suited for in most cases are uh, is better suited for home and if we then look at two teams here, and I'll come back to why I think this is so important to look at the individual, but also uh, the team, um, is to see that here you can see the team, uh, it's team one and team two. So team one have agreed to come in uh, Tuesday and Wednesday, uh, and team two has decided to come, uh, to come in on, on Monday and Thursday. Of course, both teams are with the same company. And here you can actually see that not only do they plan so they are physically together on the same days, so they kind of get the maximum benefit of being in the office. But it's also much better for capacity and occupancy if you do it like this, instead of if people came in at, at random, as, as, as Chris Tubb is, is referring to us in his article on LinkedIn. And what's interesting here is actually also, you know, the office that is still adds a lot of value by really making space for social capital to thrive. And there was a uh, there was an Harvard Business Review article from a month or so ago, with some uh, scientists from Microsoft who looked through a lot of the data they they've created the last year or so, and one of their conclusions, I think the most inter interesting conclusion, is that the spontaneous informal interactions at risk in a hybrid and remote work are not distractions or unproductive. They foster the employee connections that feed productivity and innovation. And these interactions are the soil in which ideas grow. And that's why it's so important, I believe, that what might seem unproductive in the very short term might be the most productive in the long term. So the third uh, area here is master the digital room. So a lot of the things that you would do in a, uh, in a normal face-to-face uh, -face meeting is also the same thing you should do in, a, in, a, in an online meeting. So you should still prepare, you should still explain why we're having the meeting, you know, what are the roles, roles, you know, who have the different roles in the meeting. You should engage your, um, your, the participants and so on and so forth. But there are especially three areas I believe is, is, is very important in, in an online setting. One of them is, is, is agree on the housekeeping rule. So that is, for instance, you know, do we, do we have camera on? Uh, it depends on the intensity of the meeting, probably. You know, you raise your hand if you have a question or if you have a comment. Uh, make sure to, to mute when you're uh, only listening and so on and so forth. That's important, too, because it's not natural for us necessarily to be in that setting. Um, the other thing is really engaging participants. And, and that's about... Uh, uh, also doing lots of micro engagement, so to say, you can, you know, use polls, you can use quizzes, you can use energizers. I'll give you an example in a bit on that. Because what we've, what has also been, uh, what is seen and by, by um, what has been see, seen in, by research, what we can see is that a lot of people do uh, on, on work related and non work related stuff while uh, whilst being on, in online meetings. So it's important to, to constantly engage the participants. Um, and as, as one example, we have, um, we have in my team, if we have an, a meeting that is an, at least an hour long, we always start the meeting with an energizer. And I'll give you an example on that in, in just a bit. And the final part is really to manage energy. And what I mean by that is that we can, we can probably at maximum keep 20 minutes of, uh, of, of attention. Um, so it's important to, to, keep a, to have a lot of variance in the way we, we run meetings. So whether that's separating the, the meeting into different groups, you go out, you come back into to plenum discussions, or you maybe engage via the, the chat box or whatever, is important to get the variance in. Because we have so many meetings and there's a risk with more meetings. That's also what most can see, that in a hybrid workplace or with people working remotely, with more online meetings, there's risk of mental exhaustion, there's risk of too many meetings, and it's just difficult for people to, uh, to, 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 to manage the energy. 
And this is just an example of what we actually, we've created this uh, Lego uh, Playoffs uh, handbook, a handbook of energizers in our team. And we then use that every time we, we have a meeting in the team. And we've actually right now trying to also engage other teams in Lego to do the same. So hopefully we can kind of like propel a, a, a trend there. And then finally, um, what, what, I, what I describe as, as a trade of interest. And um, what I mean by that is really that for, for leaders, I believe, to really, uh, you say, it's, it's a huge change process we're in. And for leaders to come out uh, good, um, you know, in this change process, I think we need to understand and communicate the three different uh, interests in this. There's, uh, there's the I or the me. So that is basically my, uh, my needs, my flexibility, uh, my ability to actually plan my, my week, my month, my, my work day. Then there's also the team, and the, the I also has to adapt to the team. So my team also has to, has to adapt to whatever I find is important to, to create a good team bond, to create a good team spirit, and to actually uh, develop as a team. So, you know, the, so that's where there's, there's a potential conflict there, and, but there, there is two potentially different needs in some cases. And then there's also the, the third uh, entity here, which is a company. And the company also has some needs, like building a culture, just, you know, sustaining the culture, uh, like developing leaders, like onboarding people, the social fabric of the, of the whole company. For a company like Lego, which, which has been around for almost 90 years, the history and the values are so crucial. And the, the, of course, the company, represented by its executive leadership team and the board, they want to maintain this, of course. So these three ent entities have to allow, you know, ha we have to understand each other. So it's not, so when I ask you to come in with the rest of your team on Wednesday, it's not because I want to, it's not because I don't trust you, it's because I want to build the team. And the same when the company sets out a, so say a guideline or a, um, or a concept for how to work um, uh, going forward. At Lego, for instance, we have a, 3.2 uh, model that we communicated just recently. That's not because the company do not trust, uh, does not trust the, the employee. It's really because it has some needs that, it, that it's also important to fulfill. Otherwise, I think we run the risk of, uh, of this tug of war between the entities. And, and um, so explaining that to your employees, you know, and, and constantly refer back to, uh, to the different needs I believe will be a, a hugely important change management task, but something we must overcome in this new world. So that was it.